Hello, today we are talking about a new stack from Speedy Bee. This is called, and it rolls off the tongue very easily, the F4 V455 stack. And it consists of an F405 flight controller along with um, a 55 amp 4-in-1 ESC. And what you get in the box, here's a manual. The flight controller here, you can see loads of pads there. The um, ESC. And underneath of these, a wealth of accessories, including uh, cables, screws, and even an XT60 to put on, which is quite nice. Feature-wise, I guess one of the, the main things is it's fairly cheap for a stack. We're looking at uh, just under $70 at the moment. Although it is F4 and not F7, so I guess that you might want to think about that. But because it's Speedy Bee, it also has a built-in Bluetooth uh, receiver, so you can configure it via the app and not have to plug it into like Beat of Light all the time, which is quite nice. Also says it has DJI plug and play, which is another way of saying it's got something like a nine or 10 volt output to run the VTX. And you can also use that with walk snail as well. Let's go close up, let's see what it's all about and uh, have a look at all these pads and things, see what we can do with it. Okay, so let's have a proper look in the box and see exactly what's in there. As mentioned, we have got the 55 amp all-in-one speed controller Nice uh, heat sink there, good solder points obviously, and uh, for each success it can run. Okay, here's the flight controller, and one thing that stands out is this huge amount of pads you've got there. Um, all nicely labelled, you've even got ones around the side, I think that those are for LEDs, I cannot remember. Uh, this has got a USB-C connector, the bottom we've got a SD card so you can do uh, black box calling and stuff here. They've got the port, they've called it the plug and play for the DJI Air unit. Uh, but of course, what it means is you can take a, a higher power off there. I think it's 9 volts, it's something like 3 amps, so you can run Walk Snail or other sort of higher end stuff. And you've got the connector there for the ESC. And I'm guessing what we should have in the box is a cable for it. Multiple cables, in fact. As, as before, what we said is we got the XT60 which will save you a job. You can just solder that straight on. You've got a 35 volt, uh, 1000 UF capacitor there. Some little squidgy bits, uh, big screws, depending how it's mounted. It used to be the case that you'd have a standoff connector, a standoff connector, and a standoff, the sort of longer screws um, and little sort of rubber things to put things in between seems to be more common now. And some other screws there and in this one, You've got all the connectors. I did notice that a bunch of people have already re released reviews on this and they are making big things about saying, oh my God, it's so cheap. It's amazing uh, value for money. And it is value for money. It's not the cheapest. It used to be the fact that everything had gone way up in price. You can get similar things to this now. There's not many, there's like two or three available, but it's not the very cheapest. And I haven't tried any others and I don't know what it's like. This I am gonna try out. And what we'll do first, just to see uh, what what we have in terms of UARTs and stuff, is I wanna plug this in and uh, just see what it comes up with. So if we just connect in and have a look, we, oh, it comes out with 442, which is really nice. And ports wise, oh, you've got loads of stuff there to do. Uh, a couple of them are taken up. Uh, UART 4 is configuration MSP along with USB VCP so I guess uh, UART 4 might be the Bluetooth connection. We've got a sensor input on UART 6 but we still got some other bits and pieces available uh, and then it's not really much good at looking at the rest. The, the interesting thing about it is it comes with an inbuilt barometer which is really handy and that's about it. Let's see if we can connect to it via Bluetooth. Whilst I've still got it plugged in you'll notice this little flashing light down at the bottom of your screen. That is one of four LEDs that reports to um, tell you about the battery status. I.e. if they're all lit up, then that's 100%. Three is like up to 75, two is up to 50, and like one is less than 25. The only thing I don't get, and obviously it's, it's less than one because we're on USB power, is how does it know it has like a 3S, 4S, 6S battery and, and thus what the um, the level is. Perhaps it it tries to work it out on a, I guess it does a normal beta flight thing. It, it says, oh, this is this battery's been plugged in and it's like 12.6, therefore it must be uh, a free cell battery or something like that. Anyway, that's, that's a nice little feature. 
Okay, so let's start up the SpeedyB app and see if we can find. We just hit this plus button and it goes and looks and look at that, it's found it. Isn't that cool? It even shows a pretty little graphic. This is available for iOS and Android, which is a bit different because normally iOS is ignored. And you can do a password setup just to stop anybody else connecting or being confused. I might set that up later. And basically, this is a, a, a bit like having Betaflight, although I think you, there's also bits in the SpeedyB app so it's like iNav and uh, something else as well. But yeah, just picking that up, moving it around, you can make all these changes just on your phone. Now, I know uh, a lot of people sort of like the Lua scripts and stuff. I quite like seeing it like I would in Betafly and being able to do it that way. And this is a real bonus as, of course, this is just part of the setup. And once we've done it once, it's there for next time. So I'm not someone that likes to do a bench review and says, oh, there you go, I'm sure it'd be quite nice and we can go off and test it. However, the thing about testing components is and stuff is I could go and put it in a little five inch quad like this guy and no doubt it would fly pretty good, but I don't know what the difference is between this and another flight controller uh, or this and another ESC. For me, it, it sort of works or it doesn't work. I mean, unless obviously something's wrong then it's like easy to diagnose. So instead of trying to fly something this time, I thought what I'll do, I'll try and set it up in something stupid. I've got this old F450. This was donated by me, to me by my friend Neil and it's sat in his garage for a while and it's mostly covered in mud. And it's got the original DJI uh, 920 KV motor. It's got some eight inch props. I think we can probably run nine on 4S and it's got a bunch of wires and an old uh, free sky receivers and I, I do this for two reasons first is I've always wanted to know if we can acro one of these properly with modern gear what happens if you take old stuff put modern gear in it will it fly or will it just break and because it was a donation from a friend it doesn't matter so much if it crashes and breaks but what I thought it would do also is need a lot of tuning and I don't like tuning, I'm very lazy, but if I've got something where I can connect to my phone and try some different tunes out and keep flying it in the field, then I think um, it might be an interesting test to do it. So come back next time and I will be hooking this up essentially to these motors uh, and, yeah, and everything else is going. We'll have to put a new FPV system on there and we're going to see what happens. Will I be able to fly it, FPV? Will it work? Will it be horribly wobbly? And will it acro? And will it explode onto the ground? In the meantime, this has been part one of the review of the Speedy B F4 V4 55 stack. Very competitively priced. It looks very nice to set up and it's got some cool features. Uh, so there'll be links down below if you want to check that in more detail. Come back for part two when I'll be attempting to fly it. The reason I've decided to put it in a part two is with the weather and time-wise, trying to, trying to get out there in reasonable time might be tricky, but I will do it eventually, and uh, hopefully it's, it's gonna work well, but let's, let's find out. Anyway, hope that video's been helpful. I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.